The latest portfolio calculator has been updated through Friday, August the 19th. You can see the results here. On Monday, we were at equity peaks. You see there was a gain last Friday and on Monday. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were very choppy days as the market tried to go down. Uh, the market tried to go down yesterday. We had some gains on the short side to offset the losses on the long side. And so we are at a drawdown level that is common after being at an equity peak on Monday. And so this is a drawdown alert. This is a good time to potentially add contracts or to start if you haven't started yet. And we are in a 33% uh, of our, our trading days are losers over the last 12 days. This measures the winning percentage of days over the last 12 days. Four days in a row at 33%. You can see this chart right here I've created and it shows uh, the 33% level is right here. And so can also be a good time to start. We were at uh, on a hot streak up here. Six days in a row at 75%. And we anticipated it cool, cooling off. You see uh, big equity peaks in this portfolio. A 34K day there on, at, on the 27th of July. Um, and so there was a lot of strength at the end of July. You see the 19th had a 28K gain. The 27th had a 34K gain. August the 3rd, which we did not... We didn't trade this. We were waiting for a 15K drawdown. We barely missed this move up. That made the difference on the month. Had we started here um, in our live trading, we would be up on the month, taking having traded this day. Um, but instead, we started on the 9th. And so, and we also had some differences between the micros and the E-mini. So we're down on the month, a little less than 2% in real trading. And so... Um, looking for, but since but since this gain, there hasn't been, um, you know, a whole lot. If you take a look at the net gain, minus 18,000 since this day. Um, even though there was an equity peak there, um, from here to here, there was a gain of 4,400. Uh, but from the ninth, uh, where we traded, there was, uh, it's about break even since we traded. But there were some automation errors that take us down a little less than 2% in our real trading and so that is where we are while we started in a drawdown let's look at the multi charts portfolio trader after we look at the drawdown curve once again and compare those here is the drawdown curve once again very frequent place to visit it's it's frequently visited equity peaks up here you can see where where um, the lines get thick and dark it's visiting equity peaks up here uh, pegs away at equity peaks and then it's very common to come down here and visit these drawdown levels also. So we are trying to position ourselves and time ourselves for uh, you know gains like this. The $34,000 gain on a uh, $28,000 gain on the 19th, $34,000 gain on the 27th, $28,000 on the 3rd. Um, and so you know it'd be nice to if we go from this point forward. Friday was the 19th, and so. I'm not sure what trade day of the month. The calendar day was the same. But if we can get on a run like this, the end of the July and beginning of August were strong. If we get on a run like that, you're looking at you know, a short period of time. A lot of the gains remain in a short period of time. But from the July the 19th through August the 3rd, there was a $93,000 gain. We sat out during this time period. This is just one of the worst timings for sitting out because I was sick and had COVID, like I said before. So we got out in this time frame and just missed one of the biggest moves here. So unfortunate timing for being sick and sitting out that move. But this shows you, highlights what can be what can be done in a very short period of time. Um, and you can see the sum of that when you, when you click on this in Excel. If you look, I'm going to get the pin out and show you where you can look to see the sum. You can see the sum right there. 93,797 when you highlight a group of cells, you can see that. And so 93,000 there during this time period, minus 18. And so, you know, if you start trading in here, this time period, the ninth, from the 9th to the 19th, you're breaking even, or you have an automation error and you're down a little bit. And it feels like, you know, it feels like you've been trading a month and you've only been trading, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine trading days. And so looking for this cycle, 
Um, managing our risk, if we don't get it, if we get more chop, we will stop at a worst case drawdown by a multiple of, you know, 33, 33 to 38K is what we talked about. And so we are currently at a $23,000 drawdown. So 15K from here per E-mini, which is 3,000, uh, no, it's 1,500 per micro or 6,000 uh, 6, if you're trading four micros to the worst case drawdown, 1,500 if you're trading one micro in the 50K or 15K is the uh, amount you should risk um, trading one E-mini to capture these moves and if you do that you could potentially it's possible you could potentially catch you know nearly ninety thousand dollars in gains we've seen that before past performance is not indicative of future results though so anything could happen this market it's August sometimes you know in the, in, historically before the modern trading era um, you know going back 10 15 years ago August were just kind of a paltry paltry slow choppy month and so um, let's look at the uh, multi charge portfolio calculator as well as the market so here is the multi charge portfolio uh, trader uh, going back to 2018 the portfolio calculator goes back to 2011 and you can see the drawdown alert right here good entry point potentially a good time to start trading again and here's the performance summary uh, here is the close trade to close trade so this, the, the drawdown here is based on close to close drawdown, so close trade basis. So some of these spike downs may not represent real-time equity. There could be open positions that are profitable that would take your real-time equity higher. So it's just summing up the close trades and not accounting for the only counting for the close trades while not accounting for the open positions that could either be more positive or more negative, actually. So you could see how quickly this one reversed, probably because there were some open positions that were profitable, and the losers were stopped out, and then the winners were booked and brought this back. And so um, here is the performance back to 2018. Let's do a let's do a trade analysis, total trade analysis, and you can see $147 average trade profit on the long side, 111 on the short side. And let's look at the performance on the long and shorts. So pretty good. Um, and so that's what I wanted to share with you. Let's look at the market really quick. We are at the intersection of two trend lines. And so you can see I've drawn these on here. And in the short term, we've had very bullish psychology. Uh, the market has said, uh, one, that the Fed's going to pivot. And Fed is the biggest fundamental. All this other talk about earnings, and it all depends on the Fed. And so right now they've in introduced so much liquidity. And, uh, you know, is the Fed pivot? My opinion was that they're not going to pivot, and we're in QT now. And now I've had to rethink that opinion of mine. Uh, QE, uh, QT means that the Fed prints money, easy money versus tough money to fight inflation. And so... My opinion is is that we are, uh, while the Fed says they're going to do QT, we're still in QE. And I think maybe the market's come to realize that. Maybe they've come to realize that maybe, you know, the Fed, either the Fed's going to pivot or they never really have gone to QT yet. It's, it's crazy to think that uh, they just started QT and they're going to pivot. But they're really, the Fed monetary policy is still really easy. They're 1.3% away from all-time highs in their balance sheet um, and interest rates are less than 3% which is historically low and so um, you see this short-term uh, trend line that's very aggressive and you see the long-term downtrend line and so we're at this apex of which trend line is going to work um, and so um, it'll be interesting to see that oftentimes when trend lines become recognizable they get broken and so which one of these trend lines is going to get broken both or one or the other you could see uh, this trend line go up and destroy this tr downtrend line and then this go down like this and the reason I say that is because up moves have been more favorable right now because of the mindset that hey we're still in QE the liquidity is there it's hard to short the market until we get more Q QT it's going to maybe be hard to short the market still so this could change on a dime 
And this is my analysis because I've anticipated that QT would take over and it would be easier to short the market. And that's just not the case. And so we just go with the trend. We still trade our long and shorts. And on any given day, uh, even in an uptrend, we should have opportunities to short the market or go long the market as well. And so we take long and short trades, and this is why um, the opportunity is there for both. And I am anticipating maybe um, a pullback here and then a move up or a move up and then a pullback here. Whatever the case may be, I think the, that the trend – the short-term trend is up. The long-term trend is potentially down, but you know the market may make new highs before it actually goes down again. So we will see interesting times that we live in, and it's good to be a short-term trader. And I like the opportunity we have in this drawdown alert. Hey, David Bean here. Welcome to Capstone Trading Systems YouTube page. Be sure to subscribe to join our community of algorithmic traders. We are real money traders. We share our winning streaks. We share our losing streaks as well as market updates, strategies, and coding tips.